G'day everyone. Uh, welcome again to the Great Australian Craft Show. That's a daisy. Just keep that iron off. I don't think I need that on right now. Just moving some things out of the way and getting myself organized. Um, hopefully this uh, doesn't zoom too much in on my hands seems to it might so I do apologize if it does I'll try and keep it zoomed in on the actual um hi Lynette how going zoomed in on the um the actual uh foot so uh when you pop on please feel free to say hello um hey Rado how going <laughs> my staunch follower <laughs> So uh, yesterday we did a little bit of this one, which I haven't taken photos of and put up online yet, but um, we've also got to finish this around here, which was the top part of that design. So we might finish that off here quickly and uh, then we might go on to the next pot, uh, spot. And you can see I've still got plenty to do, plenty, 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 all the way around. So I've still got lots and lots to do, a couple of corners. Um, lots of in, in between is here, which is easy to fill. So I'll um, uh, on time this time. I am D. It's not very often at the moment. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it, Lynette. That's the idea of it all. Hey, so you might hear Julie in the background. She's just fiddling around and trying to help me out. She's just rocked up. She's all fresh and ready to go for another day. So in here I did these little fellas here and the top of that flower you can see that the flower starts in this part I've sectioned it off and I've made it go behind that line or those two lines to look like it's behind them and same with these uh, these sort of funny looking flowery things whatever they are um, and uh, we also we need to put something else in here something up and around that can go in behind so we've just got to figure out what I'm going to do there and then we we maybe some leaves or something and then we're going to fill in between so this is a real quilt it to death kind of thing bit of a divide and conquer with the with the dividing lines in between each section around the edge and not all of it has been done that way oh you're always late D oh that's all right so am I that makes a good pair um so to, to follow on with what was going on in here, we might add in here just one of these ones with the cross. Uh, is this all done freehand? Yes, it is, Dee. So this, this little uh, demo is really about freehand quilting. I, I'll tell you the products I use that might help you. Um, I use these quilting gloves. Um, are they have that on the hand so my fingers are always free so I can grab and change threads anytime I like um, I put in this is just black uh, homespun co uh, cotton and that is a uh, that's actually a poly inside and then a black on the back as well so um, the thread I'm using is called Mirage from Wonderfill and it's a number 26. I do have that in stock and I have the gloves in stock as well. They are brilliant. You can get them um, online. Uh, if you're going in through the Crafter, Crafter Live event with the Great Australian Craft Show, you can get them at $36 still, but online as a rule, they are $42. Um, these these uh, demos are here to show you that I don't do perfect um, and neither do you have to. You, um, oh, the pencil I use to draw on at the moment, I'm using a Bowen pencil and it has the eraser, which I think I've pulled out too far. <laughs> but anyway, that's fine. And it has refillable leads that you can put in it and it does do a nice fine line. So if I ever wanted to use some sort of stencil on here, I could as well and quite easily use this pencil in a stencil. Pencil in a stencil. So uh, the Bowen pencils are 22 each and uh, the gloves I've already told you. The fabric is $12 a metre and the wadding. I do sell wadding by the way, ladies. If you ever need wadding, I can supply you with poly uh 100 poly i have poly wool and poly cotton i also have wool and 100, like 100 wool and i also have 
100% cotton as well. So let's get to it. Oh, my needle, titanium based needles, because they do cop a bit of a beating with me. So I use superior needles, and this is a number 90. Um, and I think that um, Julie's got these sort of sitting in behind. I don't know if you can see them. There's the gloves. Um, I'll just try and get that there. That's the gloves there. Okay. This here is the Bowen pencil. Just, just in there. And a pencil refills, a pencil and refill. Yeah, they come with the refills in them and any refill will fill them. Sure. So Dee would like a bow and pencil set so you just go. write her name oh you can just write a name yeah. on that and pop it in there yeah. and just pop it with yeah. the yeah i did have a, a box there empty one ready for today's orders but it's oh, probably it oh it's probably yeah that's okay um judy hi judy hey going all right and the thread i'm using it's not this color but it's this is the this is the brand this is the other color i was using the other day it's mirage and it's number 26 um no jody i've just started just talking about the products i'm using thanks love and um yeah so now we're going to move on to do some sewing so yesterday i said to you that when i'm doing these round flowers i put a drawing on the page an old page i should say the fabric and i will draw in a round flower or oval shape like that and you can see it's all puffy and that's okay because with all the stitching I'm going to do, that is going to be pushed right down. And sorry, my hands are in the way. And then I put the circle in where the centre. Now, depending on whether I put the circle there. Oh, D, it is really lovely thread to work with. Um, love it. 30 weight. Um, and with a 90 uh, gauge needle or 14 um, it works really well, really, really well. Or I can put the, the circle up there, which means that the petals are going to flow in the backward direction. So that sort of makes, if that makes sense to you, you're going to see them come backwards. All right. So depending on where I put the circle as to where and how the shape of the flower is going to look. When I'm doing these sort of ones here, I place a cross where I would like it to go. So that, or even a star type, you know, asterisk type thing, you can do whatever you like, just so I know that's where I'm going to put one of those. With the leaves, I literally just do the leaf shape. I don't go any further than that. So if that makes sense there, you can see it. And then I know that I'm going to put a couple of leaves in behind and around, and that helps with where my design is going to start and finish. Oops, a days, bit of a... Can't go all the way out there, that's a bit weird. Um, so I might have it go up here like that and have it come down, but I wouldn't have two leaves ending. So the end and start of the next one are away from each other. I wouldn't have that ending over here. I'll give them a gap, otherwise it does look a bit strange. Um, and then I might just fill in with other things. With these fellas here, I will use, say, something to the effect of this. And I might just do that, just so I know. And I might have one come over here. I might have it huge. Whatever I decide at this time. And that's the sort of just, just drawing I'll do, just to give myself a placement. And it gives my, my brain somewhere to work with, rather than trying to guess all the time. Other times when I'm doing infill, if I'm wanting to use a stipple, I'll just draw that. Or if I'm wanting to use the circles, the pebbles, whatever I like, I'll do that as well. Sometimes I'll do crosshatch and I'll just do that sort of thing. Then I know that that, that is exactly what I'm going to, um, to do in those areas. Okay, so just rub them out because we're not going to do that yet. So let's get on. I've put a star here or a cross here, and that is what I'm going to use next. Now, because my hands are going to be right at the edge of this quilt, I'm going to turn it that way. So I've got my flat hand with my glove there, and I've got, just put my other light on, and I've got, I'm going to lift and put my two fingers underneath and my thumb there. I'm not 
grabbing as such there's no grabbing like that I'm just resting them underneath my thumb there just so I can hold on to it so when I move here I've got a little bit of stability this side what you'll notice with a lot of the infill work I will do a lot of short movements but with this other work um, as in the patterns and designs they tend to be a little bit slower so bear with me and I do because my designs are this is literally just a demo piece. I will um, needle down, needle up, and just cut off. I will, oh, I don't want to cut that. I don't know why it's not doing that today. It didn't do it yesterday either. No. So I'll just cut that shorter for me because I do want it to disappear but not come unthreaded. So I'm going to place my foot down in the center and my needle down. Now, if the thread doesn't completely disappear, I will take a few steps to the side and then stitch that in. My foot is a open toe foot. Sorry, not the needle of the camera, I should say. And that will also help with your visual. Okay, so you can see what's in there. If you have a closed toe foot, you can also use that. Um, either way is fine. Now, let's see if I can actually get this up a little bit higher. Now, reminder, I am working over the top of this. So I do apologize if my hands get in the way. I'll try and keep them out of the way. I'm going to go over the top of those there, come back to the center. Did forget to change my tension. I do it every time. Put your tension around about five or six because with free motion you do need to adjust that. I'm going to do the centers of these at the moment and you'll see it'll grab the fabric and all that sort of thing. That's because I'm close to the edge of the fabric. We're going to go up one, down up the other side that point back down you can travel back over the same line it does not matter up and back a few times until you're satisfied with the size of that pedal and then you come out the other side and do that one back up it's daisy it's grabbing very close to the edge that's not unusual so don't get sort of frightened about it um, if i didn't have the camera on i would probably be holding around about here um, I probably could still and you'd still be able to see so I'm just going to put one finger under and one over just to give it a bit more stability up and back up and back until I get the size of the flower I want and like I say don't panic if you get caught up I just got caught up my new machine is the first machine I've owned that the needle threader actually works. I love needle threaders. So the reason why they got caught is because it's got a bit of a knot going on under there and it didn't like it. So we'll just trim that off just to get it out of the way. Sometimes they get caught in these little groove bits um, and sometimes you've got to go along and give them a bit of a shave. So foot back down, needle down, and you watch that thread disappear. And I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way. I'll turn it sideways so you can see. Now this one's going to go behind this flower. So I'm okay with only going halfway up and just filling in that little gap there. So I hope that helps with what I'm doing. Now, I've got the four. One, two, three, four. But I want to go in between these. So let's go back up the centre here and go up through there. Filling up that area and do about four or five times around. We can go this side and you can see I'm going over the top of the, uh, the flower that's there. So it looks like it's um, sort of going through. And I need to go this side. And, and these are just things, these are just decisions you make as you go, whether you're going to go, you know, in between, behind, or, you know, in front of something. So this one can just, a few little lines just to make it look like it's there. Does cutting it on the back like that make it unravel on the front? No, no, Rado, it doesn't. Because there's so much stitching going on, there's not a chance in Hades 
any of that is coming undone. I could take that big knotty bit off and give it a trim and none of that will come undone, guaranteed. If with all those little tiny little knots and stuff, it's not going anywhere. You can see I've got the um, selvage there. So I am going to be cutting this off. So you, you won't see half of this, but it's just nice to have it finished. Good afternoon, Margaret. How are you going? So to finish off this little area, because I know it's going to be cut off, I'm just going to do a little bit of a micro stipple. And a micro stipple is brilliant if you're going tone on tone, because you could go back over the area or the stitches you've already done and, you know, the old crossing over your stitches thing. No one is going to see it with tone on tone fabric and thread. In this case, because I've got the variegated thread, it's more visual. But in saying that, half of that's going to get cut off anyway. So let's just turn it this way and work around here. And I might even try and get in that little gap there. Just grab that underneath those two fingers and use the two fingers as the guide, but without putting any strain on. My left hand is the one that's doing the movement. My right hand is just supporting that fabric, okay? There's no strain on my hands because of my gloves. And if you notice, my fingers and palm are flat, which is exactly what you want to reduce that tension on those shoulders. And please make sure your elbows are level with the bed of your machine. Don't have your machine too far away where you've got to lean over it. Um, otherwise, that'll cause issues also. So lots of little tiny movements, just like that. And you'll notice the machine has a really nice tick, 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 noise. That's the noise you're looking at when you're listening to your machine, when she's working away, and that's the noise you want to hear to know that she's happy. Okay? That will tell you that the noise of the machine sounds constant. It's um, it's not grinding or groaning or carrying on, and it's um, it's just ticking along nicely. I've actually decided just now, as we're talking or I'm talking, I'm going to leave those areas free. How's that? I'm going to just bring in here, and I'm going to echo around these babies. And again, my right hand is just supporting the guide of my left hand. And by echoing these little darlings, it's going to make them stand out a little bit more. And this one here. And if all else fails, the old saying is echo. Alright, so we come along, I'll travel along that line again. Up here, I'm going to do some half... Circles. This is your letter C, just to fill up that nice little corner. And I'm just going to echo that all the way up to that flower. Tiny little stitches, not a chance in Hades they're coming undone. And we're just going to echo that. Okay. What settings do you have? Margaret, I've got my feed dogs down. I have my tension on six. Hi, Suzanne. And I have um, a size um, a four, a 14 or 90 needle in the machine. And the thread is the Mirage, Wonderful Mirage number 26. And it's a 30 weight. So now I'm going to do one of these this way. going up to the echo and to the line, cross and up, cross and up, over we go, and I'm just eyeballing the gap in between, and if I need to get over to this area, then I just travel up the same lines that I had there before, and because we've got so much going on, you're not going to really notice that in the whole scheme of things. It's just going to look amazeballs when we're finished. So I'm just going to travel back down here 
and have one coming in the other direction again. Over, up, over, up the line, back over, travel down there, back over here. So they're just random directions. Okay. And we can have one again come from this way and come across. It's a bit straight there, but who cares? Um, I have a very strict rule of no unpicking on free motion quilting and absolutely completely necessary. Like it's just really bad and you don't you can't leave it. Um, and with these tiny little stitches, unpicking these would send you nutty. Alright, so we're gonna go up to the free motion quilting stipple there and come back and fill in from there. And then we're gonna come back down that line and come in this direction. Very similar to the one I just did, but more downward facing. And you'll notice that as I'm getting closer to that edge, this corner. Um, thank you. What is your stitch length? Margaret, stitch length with free motion. Wish I could do. Of course you can, Susan. Um, stitch, your stitch length is always going to be um, f uh, what you move it as. Um, stitch length is zero. And um, it's always with free motion quilting, hence the free dogs are down. So there is actually no stitch length. It's always with what you move it at. Marcel, the bobbin. Sorry, I forgot to mention the bobbin. I have pre-wound deco bobs in here. Um, and honest to goodness, I have so little amount of issue with tension in the bobbin because I use the pre-wounds from Wonderfill, the deco bob. I would never go back to winding my own bobbins. Um, unless I absolutely have to because of some colour issue. But you know what? Oh, I reckon I try and work a way around it. Yeah, 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 that's them. I've got some over here, love. I can just show. So this is the white one. They come in different colours. And then I've got a black one as well, which I keep handy. And I tend to use all the time. So in the, at the moment, I've got this one in the machine. They come in packs of 36 for $45. So they're, they're really reasonable as far as using. And I'll tell you what, they go for miles and miles and miles. They've got like 400 meters or something like that per bobbin. And the amount of um, uh, thread coverage you get is huge. So I do have black, cream, gray, light gray, and a white available in stock for those. If anyone's interested in giving those a go, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, gosh, excuse me. <laughs> um, I just use the same for top and bottom. Yeah, Rado, oh, look, if I'm using a, see, I'm using a variegated on the top, and that's a 30 weight. The Deco Bob is um, 80 weight, so it's really quite fine. If I was to put the 30 weight in the bobbin and try and match the bobbin up with the top, it's just not going to work. The colours are going to be all over the show. So I tend to use something that's not, um, that's a bit more easy going. Now you're going to see a lot of colour come through from the top and the reason for that is because I'm doing lots of little stitches, it's just going to push that top thread down into the bobbin, okay? And you will not get away with that when you're using two different colors. If I'm using black on the top, I'll use black on the bottom. White on the top, white on the bottom. But with variegated thread, I'll match the bobbin to the fabric. Okay, hope that helps. All right, so I'm gonna do these leaves again. I haven't done these for a little while, but I might just put some different decos in them than these ones. So let me just move that that way so you can see. I'm going to put my foot down. Hmm, I've been waiting to buy a new thread. <laughs> so, Rado, I've decided, Julie and I made a big executive decision, didn't we? Um, rather than doing new fabrics tomorrow night, we're going to do thread. It's going to be a thread night. So, tomorrow night live at, uh, I think we'll start at 7.30 because threads take so long. We're going to have a thread night. So, if you're looking to get some threads, want to know more about them, we'll have threads starting at $3 upwards. All right. So, um, tomorrow night is the night for threads. Stella, is that, oh, hang on. Um, 
that is a good excuse to buy some red <laughs> not that we need any excuse can i get a box of gray please should i pm you margaret no i can pop a box of gray now do you want light gray or dark because the dark gray or the the other gray is quite like that color or the other one oh, i've heard you Rado. you've yelled at the old squeaky wheel oh yeah i am 2d i'm a sucker for them as well squeaky wheel gets the oil honey and that's the light one no 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 fabric please <laughs> no fabric tomorrow night it's going to be thread new fabric is um going to be next week because there's more coming so um yeah i need to be ready and rare and sorry about my fingers they're very dry i'm just waiting for margaret that's the the mid to dark gray and that's your light gray so just let me know which one you'd like and i'll pop a box aside for you darling whoops a daisy nearly threw them aside yeah, just, um... light please sure thing that i can do i've got it here yeah thanks darling Come on, it's only been a few weeks. <laughs> uh, Margaret Johnson. Yep, there we go. Ta, darling, you're a good girl. Alrighty, so great. the light grey is a great one to mix in between other colours because it can go with um, all sorts of colours. Alrighty, now let's move this up up the ante let's go up and down the side now if i was to not hit those lines it's okay if you go off your lines uh, for those who are still practicing it is fine once those lines are washed out or gone or rubbed away no one knows and with the amount of stitching that, in, that is in this i can guarantee you no one's going to care all right this one i'm going to give a double so i'm going to go up the outside and give it an echo and give it a double outside edge then i'm going to travel down to here and to the center right down here so that i can do the center one now if you feel like it i can smell oh they're burning stuff outside you can travel all the way up to here freehand or you can draw your line whichever one you choose either way it is fine i'm just going to travel up to this one here go across a little and travel back down the other side just using my foot as a little bit of a guide uh no you don't get invisible bobbins pre-wound please don't ever put that in the bottom of your machine that stuff is like fishing line and if it gets inside your machine you'll never find it it's um yeah no that that um what's it called um What's that fishing line stuff called? Um, oh, God. Oh, it's, it's, they call it invisible thread. Don't ever use it in, in your bobbin. Always use it in the top. Um, the only ones I will use will be Deco Bob or Invisafil, which are both a, um, a uh, um, Wonderfill product and uh, both okay for your bobbin. But that, um, oh, God, I know the name of it and I can't think of it for the life of me. Um, that stuff that's like fishing line, don't ever put it in your bobbin. You'll never, ever, you'll never get it and you'll never forgive yourself. No, I don't have any in stock. I really, uh... all right, so we're going to give this double lines here on either side. And you can notice I'm not stopping and starting. I'm just traveling along. So I'm going to come along here, travel down there, give it its second line down there. Um, I would, yeah, steer clear of getting that stuff in your bottom. Monofilament, that's the one. Yep, it's nylon. Yep, that's the one. Yep, monofilament it is. It's nylon. And if you get those tiny little bits in the mechanics of your machine, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah, your mechanic's going to love you. Okay, so let's go back up here. And let's just do some straight lines, go across, back up, straight line. And I use that phrase very loosely. They're not really straight. <laughs> and then I'm going to go the other way on this side. I'm going to go that way, that way, that way, and that way. And I'll come up here 
I'm gonna go straight another way and just fill them in, keeping them close. And then on the opposite side, I'll go the opposite direction. And you can make them curved, you can do anything you like. And if you notice, I've just gone outside that line, just travel back up along it and make it all look like it's meant to be like that. Alright. And up and down, up and down. Okay, and then this last one, we're going to go side to side. When you first get these gloves, ladies, I don't know if you noticed, you had to make a mental note to remember to actually keep your hands flat. <laughs> I still do that occasionally. All right, so I've just done one leaf. Now I'm going to do the next one over here. Um, so we'll move over, do this one, go up, go down. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go up here and then cross back up again and do the other one that's there. And I'm eyeballing where it's sort of going to go to. And back up again. Back down. I'm doing that sort of a thicker line by going back over it. Back up. Back up. Until I get back to where I started. Just got back near a signal again. So please, so please I didn't miss this. Yeah, oh, good. Yeah, good to see you on, Shell. All right. So we're going to fill in those. I've also got the other side of this leaf down here and this flower. So I'll do this one first and come back to this later when I've got the flower in. If So if using an 80 weight on top, do you use the same in the bobbin? No, Rad, I, I use whatever I like in the bobbin. So um, whatever works. So you can use a heavier thread if you want to or you can use a lighter thread. Either way, it doesn't matter. There's an old saying of saying whatever you use in your top, you should use in your bobbin. That's a that's a fallacy. These these days, these threads are not made like that, and the machines are made to take the difference. So it's all different now. Um, the only you can go up to a hundred weight in your bobbin. What you've got to think about is your your material, what you're doing, and what design and and how you want it to look. Whether you want it to be visible or just blend into the fabric and just be quilted so that the actual quilt is the is more of the the uh, the the um, design to look at rather than the quilting <laughs> that's okay right it's all it's all learning all right so let's go up on the inside of this one and give that an echo and we'll do this one a little bit differently we'll come across and give it a center line and when we come down, we'll just give it the normal lines that we did in the other ones. And we go up and go across here, back again. I'm going over them twice just to make them a little bit more thicker. And then we're going to come back down, this one again. And I'm going to echo in there until I get to that point. I'm going to come back up over here so it's a double line. And you can see the thread changes. There's no chance in Hades you're going to be able to figure out where that thread stops and starts. Unless you're an absolute genius and you think you just happen to be able to figure that out. So that is the bottom part of that leaf. And I'm, oops, the days I just broke my thread. So I'll just stop there, cut that bobbin off. I just made it. And now we're going to redo this one. I'll just double check. Everything looks good, so it does. Just going too fast for it. Just decided to crack it. All right, the foot down. So it stops the thread from pulling out everywhere. And trim off the end. And I'm just going to manually feed it because mine's still playing up. So bear with my hand in the front of the camera. Apologise. And there we go, all done. All right, so let's do this flower again. We did this the other day, we're going to do one again. So I'll draw on here again. You've got the outside petals I want to finish there. That's not exactly the shape I want, but that's where I want them to, to finish. The centerpiece, I want it to be up here. I can make it more oval if I like. And I just need to remember 
to arch these petals as I go remembering the front ones are going to be a little bit you know different in shape like that so that the petals look like they're falling backwards so start in the middle of your first one put your foot down oops daisy down oh yes silly woman there you go down and if you can bury your thread if you can't don't stress then we want to travel down these ones and the ends of those petals are going to have like a little wiggle on them like that okay so i'm going to come down little wiggle and then back up all right ready come down little wiggle and then back up come down same one a little wiggle and back up now i'm starting to go on that angle back down you can put a gap between them that's okay and then back up back down that same one or next to it a little bit of a wiggle and back up the one that's going behind you come down tiny wiggle and then come back up the same side now these ones at the back you're not going to see that wiggle it's just going to be folded over isn't it because you're going to fold over and not see that little wiggle so we're just getting those little ones at the back done because you're not going to see those little wiggles and we're coming off to the side again a little bit of a wiggle and back up because now we're coming to the front of the petal the flower I should say where you're going to see those little wiggles all right let me get back up here before i do trim oops a day sorry guys trim that off back up to here and we're going to do our little detail lines by coming in coming in coming in back up and down it doesn't have to be right on each other they can have a little gap between them they can be long and short all right so just back up and forwards have them arching in the same direction as the petals going okay you can have one or two or three however many you want and have them arching in the direction of the petal so they don't look unusual and out of shape all right so then i'm going to travel down that last one i just did and do little wiggles on the ends of those petals where i've dipped inwards just little wiggles there travel along and like I say if I don't get the same line it's no biggie just travel up and down and I can make new lines the beauty of this type of sewing is that it's not perfect it's organic and that's what makes it doable and reachable for people to learn now once I get to that one I'm not going to have those little detail lines there because that's all buried behind the flower. So we've just got to remember it's buried. Now, this is your tricky part. I'm going to put my, my needle in the up position. I'm going to turn my machine to a zigzag. Then I'm going to make my zigzag. I love sewing and watching you sew. <laughs> oh, that's good, Kim. Welcome. I'm going to put my zigzag down to 0 0.5. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is double check where my needle is going to hit. All right. I don't want to hit that foot. You hit that foot, you'll know about it. So needle down, needle up, needle down, needle up. It's going to zip, move over. There it goes. Now it's moved over. It's going to miss. So now I can do it and start doing a little bit of a zigzag. If you get that zigzag, you just wiggle backwards and forwards and it'll get you that nice zigzag messy look, which little circles even, doesn't matter. And that makes it look like the centre of the flower. With a bit of luck, my yellow will come through. <laughs> and in the, in the colour of the thread, before it gets too much, I can't sew on it. It just doesn't seem to be. And, oh, come on, yellow. Where are you? There it is coming through and let's get that little bit of yellow in that top bit there there we go and that makes it look nice and fluffy and scent like a center of a flower so there you go 
You see that flower? Oops, it is. Sorry, guys. There we are. So you can see how I've only, oh, I've missed that one there, but it doesn't matter. I've only done those little details in these bottom ones where we can see. These ones here are hidden behind that flower, so we're not going to do those. Why would we do them if we can't see them? Foot down. Now, remember to put your machine back to free motion straight stitch. Needle in the down position. Oh, that, that just buried that thread beautifully. And we're going to go up the centre. And across, up and now, go up the centre, across, back up and now, and then bury that behind, up, across, now, and we're just making our centre piece a little bit different than the other two, and then we're going to decorate in between. So now I've given it like these little little areas where we can sew. So I can sew in here, here, and there, there, and there. I can fill them in or I can I can just leave them blank, whatever I like. But let's fill them in because I think to have them nice and full would make the rest of that petals, uh, leaf stand out. So I'm just going to travel back down here. Go up and just fill them up really close lines so I'm colouring in. That's what we love to do, don't we? Colour in with thread. And it's going to show you the variation of the, um, the thread we're using. You can see little lines backwards and forwards filling in. There we go. Travel back up to the area. We've got to fill in. There it is. And that one. Orange in it, travel over here, fill that in, a little bit of colouring going on. Down here, these things go from yellow to blue. Okay, back and forwards. One, two, got little areas that we've missed, just come back and fill them in. Cut that off, and there's your little leaf, and it's all filled in and coloured. Just checking my watch. Um, the next class is at uh, 4 o'clock, so I'm going to do another 15 minutes of this, give myself a bit of a break in between so I can get my stuff ready. I've got, um, I think I'm doing the uh, the green, no, the quilt, um, sorry, the uh, koala, koala and cocker, uh, the Australian um, native one. Yeah, so I'm doing that one. Sorry, my, I'm getting um, tongue-tied now. I'm talking a lot. Um, all right, so let's do some of these funky ones here that we did yesterday. We're going to put our foot in the down position where I want to start. Needle down, bury my thread, little fluffy bit, which I'll get rid of. And let's go up and create our first one. This one's going to go up, there, out and around. Okay, then back up a little bit, out and around. So this is a letter C. Got a lot of hair in there, I'm going to get that out when I can. Right there, up a bit, and underneath that, so we're going to finish it off there. But guess what? She's going to come back down. So just go back down there, so it doesn't look too unusual. Back down here, and here. She's coming back on the page, and as I get Closer and closer to the end of where I want to be, it gets smaller and smaller, and the last one is like a coloured in dot. Okay, then I'm going to come back up here. See how I've got a yellow bit there? That's going to really stand out. So I'm just going to um, go back up those stitches there again where I've already been. And lucky enough for me, I've got a bit of yellow coming through, then it's going to go blue. So I'm just going to stitch that line back down a little. There it is. And that just hides that bit of yellow. All right. Doesn't matter that I've gone six times over the same line. Now I don't have this big yellow bit sticking out and making itself obvious. I've fixed my problem. Now, I did notice... Oh, I'll stitch that hair in there, <laughs> get it out. I've missed the other side of this one. So let's go down and do the other side. So needle down and... I've got a fluffy bit, so I'm going to get rid of that. In a sec and I'm going to come back down here and go into a different section come up here across and down 
that's the next one. I'm going to do a couple of random lines here and you'll see why in a sec. Alright, up here again and travel over here. Down a little, back out and do my letter C. And come back a bit, a bit of the way up and do another C going to stop and get a better grip on my fabric and come up a bit and then do another one but I'm coming downwards you see how I'm now coming a little bit I'm going further up one side and I'm making this one come down so it's flowing back down towards the ground so to speak now I'm going to make them a little bit smaller and it's going to disappear behind that flower we just did there it is. It's got to go behind. There we go. Now, now. So we just bury that in. Right. Travel back up the other side. Travel up there and down so we can match up with that other line. And we go down here and this is going to go up with a big leaf, a big long strangly leaf down and we're going to have some more. Up we go and cross them over and back down. You can have this one going over that stem. No reason why not, we can have another one coming off. This can be a little bit thicker or go off the page. Let's let's do that. Let's make it go off the page. Okay. Whatever you like. You can have it that it's two of them. Then you can have one of these little funny looking flowers that we've got coming off the page. So I'm going to put that in there. Stem is going to come from that direction, and here she comes going downwards. How cool are they? I think they're funky as I love them. Let's finish it there so it finishes right at the end of that one at the start of the other one. It joins up and stop. It's such a shame we have to wait for supplies in the post. Otherwise, I'd be starting this right now. I feel so inspired watching. Oh, that's awesome. So, Claire, what you can actually do, because I'm going to be putting these up on um, YouTube. I have a YouTube channel as well. And anyone else who hasn't signed up for the YouTube channel, please go and subscribe and support me over there. And um, these will be all up there. You'll be able to stop and start them anytime you like. You'll still hear me yapping on and talking to you, obviously, because I don't cut anything. I just put it up exactly the way I've done it. So you will be able to get that for as many times as you like and watch it over and over again, okay? So let's just cut this off and see what we've done. I reckon we've done really, really well. Well, what a good team we are. How cool is this? This looks awesome. So I'm glad you're all inspired. We've still got about 10 minutes to go till 4 o'clock. Um, I'm also going to probably do a bit of fill. So let's show you some fill. Now, <laughs> no worries, Claire. So I'm going to do some circles. We haven't done them for a while. Now, if you were to go the same direction each time, you're just going to keep going around. If you go the same direction and then you go back, that's fine. Thanks, Stella. I started mine yesterday and although not perfect, I'm really impressed. Good, Margaret. That's awesome. You should be okay with okay. I'm okay with okay. And I think anyone who gives us a damn good go at doing it should be absolutely have a metal, metal pinned on them because it's overwhelming when you first look at it. But if you break it down into one little thing at a time and one little petal and one little circle or one little leaf, it's nowhere near as overwhelming as what you think. When I first started this piece of fabric, I didn't sit there and think, well, I'm just going to fill the whole thing in with this. No way known. I just thought I'd start with a flower and work from there. So absolutely have a go at it. Getting back to these, 
your circles are figure eights. So circle, then back the other way. So go to your, your right or left, and then back to your right. Travel up around that circle another half quarter or three quarters of the way. Then go right again, then left, then right, and then left. But always filling in as you go. If I need to get over here, I was once told that there is no mistakes, only individual interpretation. Absolutely. Oh, thanks, Debbie. Absolutely. D, uh, that is exactly right. It's all no different than beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Your quilting is always going to be, nothing is perfect. It's always, there's always going to be a mistake. Even with computer generated quilting, there can be mistakes. So if I want to come back over here and I'm all the way here and I've got myself over here and I don't want to travel down there because I want something else there, whatever my reason is, I can then travel back down those same lines. Hey, and if I miss a line and go like that, who cares? You're, I can guarantee you, you're not going to see it. Okay? Uh, we are our worst critic. And I always say to people, when you've got a quilt and you're showing someone your quilt and say, have a look what I did. Oh, look, but don't look at this mistake. You know, I did make a mistake here. I always tell people, don't do that to yourself. You're only belittling the amount of work you've put in. Just show them what you've got. And I can guarantee you, nine times out of ten, no one's going to pick up your mistakes. They're going to think you're fantastic, which is exactly what they should be thinking. And you're going to feel better about your work and go, well, it's not that big a mistake because they didn't even notice it. That is a learnt behaviour. Yes, Michelle is teaching us, do not be so fussy. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I am. Yeah, we're always learnt or ta taught to um, admit to our mistakes. That's okay in life in general. But when it comes to a quilt, seriously, do we need to be telling everyone <laughs> every little mistake we make? No, no, no. We just move on and we get going. Let's do some circles. Come back down here and start in that little corner there I've got. Got the foot down. I'm going to bury my thread. There she goes. Nice. Needle down. The, and you notice my needle is always in the down position when I stop. And let's go. Now, very slow movements will get me very small stitches. And that's sort of what I want to do right now because I'm in a very small spot. So one way, then the other. Go all the way back around because I need to get over this side. And then do another one all the way back around and go there. I don't care where the colours land, it's all good, it doesn't matter. Alright, then we go all the way there, just need to grab a hold of that for a bit. There, go the other way, go to the right, and then a little one in the left there, the right way around again and come out in the center of those two so that make a funny looking line and then come out to the, to the right all the way back around again and to the, to the left okay yeah, we're doing it we're getting there and you know what looks really good when you've got like white thread on white fabric or black thread on dark fabric and although it can be really hard on your eyes when you're doing that with this kind of tiny stipple or, or bubble, it just looks amazing and creates a really awesome texture. So have a go of it with your variegated, have a go of it with your, your tonal fabrics. Just have a go. All right. So I'm holding my fabric with my left hand with the glove flat on the fabric so I can move it. I'm moving from my elbow, not my shoulder. And on the right hand, I'm just slowly moving my thumb backwards and forward, just almost like a massage, just pulling the fabric backwards and forwards without creating any tension. There we go. It's a, a look. Honestly, if you're going to do a, a, a bubble or stipple, like a micro sort of version in between everything on a quilt, you want to really love it because it takes a long time to do a fill. one way all the way around again to the other way okay and one way oh there's a song that's a, a debbie harry song 
one way or another. I'm gonna get ya. I'm gonna get ya, get ya, get ya. There we go. I'm singing now. See? Julie comes in, I start singing. Ha uh ha. -huh. I do. She laughs at me. And I start singing something from the 50s. <laughs> that blows her mind because she's like, you shouldn't know those songs. I was singing Chantilly Lace in my head the other day. Are you still using the one spool of thread? Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> um, and I'm still sitting uh, on the same bobbin. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, we've got a couple more minutes and then we'll keep going. Now, I can speed this up and I'll show you in speed. It might snap the thread, but we'll give it a burl. All right. I tend to go slow so you see and you can see you can go faster. And I can make them large and small. Okay, one way or another. I'm going to get you. But because I'm going fast here, my hands are moving fast, you notice? And if I make a little jiggly movement, I'm okay with that. I'll just travel back over, just throw a circle in there. We'll colour it in, whatever needs to happen. But your thread will break more often because you're going so fast. Just be warned. Okay, but that's how. And this is without speeding up the, the uh, this is live. There's no speeding up the camera. <laughs> there we go. Oh, but he's not. Okay, we're almost there. Big one in the bond. I love doing a couple of big ones in between because it takes up some space. <laughs> and it also adds a bit of uh, texture into it without um, changing up your pattern. Go back over here. Let's fill in that. And there. Let's fill up that one. Gap. We can make them look like they're behind, so half a circle. And fill one in. Now, please don't try this at home. <laughs> Alright, got a gap here, let's fill it in. Alright. Like I said earlier, this will probably get cut off some of this, so I'm not really stressed if I don't make a beautiful circle here and there. That's a bit fast for you, yeah. But just to get that done there, I've done it. Uh, yeah, well, I know. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to do that to you. All right, so the machine is a Memory Craft, Janome Memory Craft 14,000. So it's a combination embroidery and uh, just normal sewing machine. Marcel, the fabric piece would probably be a fat quarter. So maybe even smaller. Um, all right, so I'm going to bring the camera over so you can see a little bit more. All right, I'll zoom out. There we go. That's it there so far. That's the area we just did. There. And we filled up that one. All right. How cool is this baby looking? Even if I stopped there, that is amazeballs. And I could. I could stop there. But I won't. <laughs> All right. So I will see you guys at four o'clock. Um, yeah, look, no, uh, to start with a best practice piece, you know, you wouldn't want to go any more than, you know, 15, 20 inches square. I found something that fits in your throat space. Absolutely rado. Gorgeous. Thank you, Suzanne. I have the 15,000. Just wish I lived, I was closer to you so that I could come and learn how to use it. Oh, D, yes. Um, 15,000, very, very similar to what I use. I would love to turn that machine, uh, that Michelle into a tote bag. Jody, this is going, this is sold. They um, burst of colour. Yep. 
Um, Wonderful have in Australia have asked if they could buy this from me. Um, I won't tell you the ridiculous price I gave it to them for, but really it's lovely and, and such a pleasure and um, compliment that they would like to have this on display at their shows. So when it goes on shows around the country, you, you should be able to see that at the Wonderful stand. Um, so that's, yeah, it's really nice. So far, so good. Alrighty, YouTube D, yeah, absolutely. YouTube uh, for the um, 15,000. And you'll probably find that Janome America might actually have some on that machine too. So uh, the sectional, yeah, the section pieces look good, don't they? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, and I love doing um, these ones, all these different directional things. Love them. Alrighty. See you guys at four o'clock. Thank you very much for joining me and listening to me sing. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>